Hey, so <clears throat> since I've been talking about changing my beliefs on this channel so much, sorry, my screen is all dusty. Um, I wanted to talk about how changing my beliefs is is being experienced currently in my reality because it's so profound. I will never ever stop preaching about this because it's the key to everything. I mean, I the way that you look at the world, the things that you believe about the world are what the world will be to you. And this has never been more apparent to me than it is right now. Um, so I wanted to talk about how I've been experiencing this new relationship that I found. And I wanna also talk about why I have been pretty comfortable talking about it as though it's sort of a done deal. Um, because there's a reason for that too. I've been getting like some comments that say, you know, you're way too into this. You don't know this guy well enough, blah, blah, which of course, I know it's a, it's not a really old relationship or anything like that, but um, there's a there are reasons why I feel pretty confident about it, and they have to do with all of this. So, first of all, um, you know I I'm glad that all of the beliefs that I've changed have happened quickly and in like the last six months because I just had a new relationship last year. I met somebody in July last year, the specific person I talk about in this channel. Tim. Um, I met him last year and I can clearly remember how the beginning of that relationship felt. It was, there were all kinds of thoughts and feelings at the beginning of that relationship that are not happening at all now. Um, this thing with Matt is a completely new and different and somewhat shocking experience. There are no, uh, real feelings of inadequacy. There are no, um, there are no thought, this is a profound one. You know, I used to sort of feel like I was cursed and I used to feel like there was a window for finding the right person that had closed. And that was always kind of running in the background. Since I realized that was just some bullshit thing that I had conjured up and believed and removed it, I don't think it's true at all. Now that I have this new thing, there's this this really noticeable absence of any thoughts like, you know, like this probably won't happen because it's too late or, you know, like just all of these negative thoughts that have been there in the past are conspicuously missing. They're just not there and What's there in their place is just peace. Um, like there's, there's not some new, like good thought that's there. There's just peace um, and, and sort of a feeling of being tethered to my own life, which now feels fine. Doesn't feel like some tragedy that I screwed up by not finding the right person in time. Um, so that's one thing. But another thing is, uh, I talked on this channel in June about facing up to what I think was one of my core fears, which was being alone and not just being alone, um, you know, not having a partner, because having a partner, it's become very clear to me for a long time was something that I was using to avoid coming face to face with the fact that I don't really know what I'm doing here. I don't know what happened before I was born. I don't know what happens after I die. And, you know, I'm aware on some level that I'm really the only person in this universe that I'm experiencing and that's a terrifying thought, I think, until you really sit with it and get okay with it and form some beliefs about it that are comforting rather than terrifying. You know, I spent a couple weeks in June uh, disconnected from my ex, Jean, who has sort of been like the thing that was keeping me from feeling alone. 
Um, my relationship with him was just like this thing that made me feel connected to another person. Like as long as he's around, then um, I don't have to deal, you know, I'm not alone. Um, I spent two weeks without him, without calling him 10 times a day. And we were actually kind of on the outs at the time too. So I wasn't sure that we were ever really gonna be close again. And honestly, our relationship hasn't ever been the way it used to be again since then. But, you know, in sitting there for that couple of weeks and just, I just forced myself to get comfortable with the solitude, the emotional solitude. Um, and it, it's a really profound change because it, I lost the fear of that state, like just that two week period. I kind of forced myself to experience something that I was kind of hoping to never experience, which is basically having to just deal with my own mind all by myself for more than a half a day. Um, that really did something for me. This, this whole time that this relationship has been developing, um, I haven't had any fear of it ending. I haven't had any feelings like I'm connected to another human being now. I don't want to go back to the way it used to be. Um, you know, what if he leaves, then I'll be back to the, you know, sad, sorry state of aloneness. Like that's just gone just from having dealt with, you know, that just from having dealt with this, this notion that being alone was like something really bad. There's just no fear about it, none. Like I got comfortable with myself and just being with myself um, in a profound way, not just, you know, hanging out alone in my apartment. Like that's not what I mean. I, I faced up to that thing that was driving me to, to feel like finding a partner was a life or death matter. I just don't feel that way anymore. And it's been profoundly felt during this last like month, especially recently, you know, as things like progress and get more serious. And um, yeah, I don't know. It's just a completely different experience. And and what this has felt like, what, what I've, you know, another profound thing about it for me is that you know, it, it's, it's a different experience having somebody, having a relationship with somebody when you don't need them in that way. It's just, I don't know, what you have to give is different when you don't need something that somebody else can't really provide. It's just an element to a relationship that detracts from the whole thing. And it's, it's been conspicuously missing. Fear is missing. Feeling like my life depends on it is missing. And in, in its place has just been sort of this light feeling of happiness. Like the whole thing is amusing to me in a way, just like how this, <laughs> how this showed up in my life like the second that I was able to receive it. Um, like I had to go through everything up to the point, you know, including the relationship with Steve, including, you know, what I went through in June with my ex, Jean, those things had to happen. They had to happen. Like this couldn't have come any sooner because those things happening, you know, those things led to it. You know, the thing with Steve led to the thing with Jean and then um, and then I was finally where I needed to be in order to experience this thing with Matt the way I'm experiencing it. Um, which sort of leads me to why am I comfortable talking about this when it's such a new thing? Like normally, you know, from an ego perspective, I want, it's like, you know, I don't, it's like I'm pregnant. I don't want to tell anybody I'm pregnant until after the first trimester because maybe I'll lose the baby. You know, it's that kind of like feeling where you don't want to talk about something like it's happened 
if there's a chance that it could abort. Um, and there, of course, there's a there's that chance, I guess. But the thing is, I have come into contact with the knowledge and the experience in the last six months of how the world reflects you to you. It just does, it always does, it does it perfectly. You know, whatever the content of your mind and your thoughts and your soul and everything else are, is what you're gonna experience. And this is a law, this is the law. And so you can't experience something reflected back to you that isn't a part of you. And this relationship showing up in the way it is, is a perfect reflection of where I'm at. Like it makes sense that it's happening. It, it makes perfect sense that this great person would show up because I'm in a great place. And honestly, this is the first time I've ever really, you know, um, I was 37 before I had a thought when I was 30. I think I was like, I think I'm actually, I think I could actually get married and stay married now. <laughs> you know, um, I'd been looking for a partner for ever before that. And I just, it just dawned on me when I was 37. I don't think I was ever ready to actually be married before right now. And the same thing happened to me in June, actually. And I don't, I wish I could remember the exact date, but it, it was right around the time that Matt and I started like talking for real. I remember thinking it was after the gene thing where I'd spent that time alone. I thought, wow, I really think this is the first time that I've ever really been ready for the thing that I want. And so it makes sense that it showed up then. So I'm not really that worried about it ending. I'm not worried about anybody like changing their mind suddenly because I'm not desperate. Matt's not desperate. Um, you know, I, I don't feel like either of us has played any kind of a sorry this is kind of rambly but whatever you know I was thinking yesterday about dating advice and how the dating advice you get the way that you're it's recommended for you to act and proceed some of it's good I think some of some of traditional dating advice is really uh, good in terms of timing and like just waiting to see and all that stuff but the thing is when you're in the right place you do all this stuff naturally you know, you don't leap into something because you don't need to, because leaping into things is a desperation thing. Um, you know, looking for commitments that you're not ready to have or make with somebody quickly is comes from fear. Um, and, you know, playing it cool or, you know, waiting a certain amount of time to talk to somebody after you've seen them, all that stuff. You know, if you're not coming from a desperate place of low self-worth, the things you do naturally produce the results you want naturally. That's why I don't worry about, I'm not worried about the pacing or anything that's happening with him on either end because we wouldn't be able to be having the connection that we're having if we weren't both coming from the same place. So I'm not worried about him because I know where I'm at. Um, and uh, I'm just not really worried about talking about it because I'm not really worried about anything fucked up happening in my romantic life anymore. Everything that's happened is a perfect reflection of me, including the Steve thing, everything. And I know that the thing with Matt will continue to be a reflection of me and I just keep getting better and better. Like I just keep doing more and more stuff that makes my life better. It's never going to stop being that way. So any relationship that I form at this point in my life moving forward is going to be great because there's nothing in my thoughts that are preventing that from happening anymore. And it's why I've been so adamant about focusing on myself. It's why I've, you know, I know that the specific person stuff is largely falling on deaf ears and I'm not trying to offend anybody who's in that position. And I do think you absolutely can uh, essentially select a reality where you and your ex get back together, if that's the right thing for you, that, that is absolutely possible. I think even if you're in a horrible place, you can manifest your ex back and continue to have a relationship that reflects your sense of self-worth and theirs. Um, I just think that it is, 
It's crazy. It's crazy. It's insane. Not to focus all of your effort on yourself. It's everything else is, it's like, it's just, it's treating the symptom, not the cause. Everything in your life will effortlessly reflect you. So the only thing to do is just build yourself. That's it. That's all you have to do. It's so easy. It's so efficient. And I don't know, it's brought me to a place where I have just no anxiety, no negativity, no real fear about anything having to do with any part of my life. And I don't know. I got to tell you, I got to tell you, I didn't do anything to make this map thing happen. And I am pleased as fucking punch that it did the way it did while I've been filming this channel. It's so fucking awesome. I mean, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm not entirely sure what my motivations were for starting to make this channel. I know that I met Matt through it. Um, that's really cool. But I just, I also feel like this could not be a better demonstration of everything I've talked about. Like, this type of relationship happening to me has been my fondest desire since I was like four years old. I've always wanted it exactly the way it's happening, like exactly the way it is. Um, and it's just, it's really cool that it's visibly happening in front of an audience. I just think that is so fucking cool. Like that, um, sort of the proof of what I've been saying just kind of showed up in this crazy magical way. <laughs> so cool. Um, anyway, yeah, so, um, that's why I feel comfortable talking about it. Not because, um, I don't know. I realize there's an element to it. I'm, I've been really transparent um, about everything here, all the embarrassing things, um, you know, all the things that could make me look like I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, I've been really upfront about what's happening real time in my life because I, I guess I enjoy being a guinea pig. And uh, so I wouldn't dare deprive you, my beloved uh, unknown friend out there from seeing what's going on and how I really feel about it. You know, I, I, haven't, I haven't known this guy for very long, but um, there's been a lot of really weird stuff. Um, I used to have a blog when I was in my early 20s um, that had a following, <laughs> uh, and I wrote some sort of like softcore erotica about my future husband. And in it, I describe this man as being six, five, which is how tall Matt is. And the description of the relationship between me and this guy and the description of stuff is Matt. It's him. Like I described him 20 years ago in a story that I entitled an attainable dream, a realistic hope. And everything since then apparently has just been the road to this. So if, if somehow Matt just like takes off out of the blue one day, and I suddenly feel like my life is over, I will tell you. Um, I will post it here, but that's really not how things work and that's why I'm not worried about talking about it. So I just wanted to make this extremely long video talking about my um, returning you to your regularly scheduled soap opera of my love life, apparently. So have a great day and I whatever. I'm not going anywhere.